This is my last video about lipid metabolism, which is the synthesis of fatty acids. The first thing I want to do is to take a few steps back and provide some context. I don't know about you, but when I look at this graphic, I get a little bit overwhelmed. So I'm going to try to talk about what each part means individually. Remember, some processes happen in the mitochondrial matrix, and some processes happen in the cellular cytosol. In the last video, I talked about how fatty acids are activated and transported into the mitochondrial matrix through a carnitine transporter. In the mitochondrial matrix, the activated fatty acids undergo beta oxidation. This produces some of the acetyl-CoA for the Krebs cycle. Remember that when glucose is present, glycolysis will occur, producing pyruvate in the cytosol. This pyruvate will be transported into the mitochondrial matrix and then converted by pyruvate dehydrogenase into acetyl-CoA as well. So now let's just focus on the acetyl-CoA. The acetyl-CoA can be converted into ketone bodies, but most of the acetyl-CoA is going to be pushed into the TCA cycle. The TCA cycle produces reduced coenzymes and ATP, and as you're well aware, citrate is one of the intermediates of the TCA cycle. Citrate also participates in the citrate malate shuttle. Citrate is transported out of the mitochondrial matrix and back into the cytosol, where ATP citrate lysase converts citrate back into oxaloacetate. Oxaloacetate is reduced to malate as NADH is oxidized to NAD+. Malate is then transported back into the mitochondrial matrix. Malate is reduced back into oxaloacetate as NADH is oxidized back to NAD+, and oxaloacetate feeds back into the TCA cycle. That's the complete citrate malate shuttle. Now I'm going to reel it back in and focus just on two of the players in this cycle, citrate and malate, on the cytosolic side of the mitochondrial membrane. Some of the malate is going to be converted to pyruvate. In the process, 1-NADP plus is going to be converted into 1-NADPH. The pyruvate will then be moved into the mitochondrial matrix. We already saw that some of the citrate would be converted into oxaloacetate by ATP citrate lysase, but some of the citrate will also be converted into acetyl-CoA. Stick with me now, we're almost to the finish line. The two molecules that are most important to keep track of for fatty acid synthesis are acetyl-CoA and NADPH. Acetyl-CoA and NADPH will be utilized on the cytosolic side of the membrane in the synthesis of fatty acids, which is a reduction process, as opposed to beta oxidation, which occurs in the mitochondrial matrix and is an oxidation. Okay, so that was a ton of information. Here's the big picture again. Maybe pause your video and take a look at it and see if you understand everything that's going on. And if you don't, go back and watch this part of the video again. Okay, so now I'm actually going to talk about fatty acid synthesis. At the beginning of the process, we have four main players to think about. The first is acetyl-CoA, second is acetyl-ACP, third is malonyl-CoA, and the fourth is malonyl-ACP. You're already familiar with coenzyme A, but ACP is something new. ACP stands for acyl carrier protein. You don't need to worry about the whole structure of the molecule, but there's two things you should note about it. The first is that it holds on to the acetyl group through a sulfide bond, and the second is that it holds on to the larger enzyme complex at a serine residue through a thioester bond. So, back to the four main players. Acetyl-CoA can either be converted into acetyl-ACP or malonyl-CoA, and then malonyl-CoA is converted into malonyl ACP. Here's a closer look at the reactions that form these beginning molecules. Acetyl-CoA is enzymatically carboxylated to form malonyl-CoA. The reaction gets the carbon dioxide from a molecule of bicarbonate and requires an investment of one ATP. 
Alternatively, acetyl-CoA can be converted into acetyl-ACP by having its acetyl group transferred from CoA to ACP. This reaction doesn't require any energy input. Malonyl-CoA can also be converted to malonyl-ACP by having its malonyl group transferred from CoA to ACP. This reaction also doesn't require the input of any ATP. At this point, you should recognize all of the molecules that are going to be present at the start of lipid synthesis. Lipid synthesis is a repetitive cycle. Basically, you start with a single molecule of acetyl ACP. In each round of synthesis, you add on another molecule of malonyl ACP through a series of four reactions. The fatty acid chain gets longer and longer by two carbons at a time each round of synthesis until the fatty acid is complete. The first reaction is a condensation reaction in which malonyl ACP is combined with acetyl ACP by a condensing enzyme releasing ACP and CO2. The next reaction is an oxidation reduction reaction in which NADPH and hydrogen are oxidized as the new condensed molecule is reduced. The next reaction is a dehydration reaction that removes a molecule of water from the condensed molecule. The final reaction is another oxidation reduction reaction in which the condensed molecule is reduced as NADPH and a hydrogen ion are oxidized. The cycle is then repeated using the new molecule of fatty acid instead of a new acetyl ACP. So let's review that really quick. The first reaction is a condensation reaction. The second reaction is a reduction with NADPH. The third reaction is a dehydration reaction. And the fourth reaction is another reduction with NADPH. I think this picture is really cool because it shows how fatty acid synthesis actually happens in animals. There are two of the same enzyme complexes that are located right next to each other. You can see that the substrates enter the enzyme complex at the orange end, undergo all four of the reactions that elongate the fatty acid chain, and then are fed directly into the next enzyme so that it can go through all four reactions again. And the cycle just keeps on going between these two enzyme complexes until the fatty acid is complete, at which point the green end liberates the fatty acid from the complex. So that's all I'm going to say about lipid metabolism. I know that that's not everything that you need to know, but I do hope that that helps review the basics and wanted to wish you good luck on your final, and I hope you have a great summer.